Maharishi, I start with those main attacks which have been brought up against you and your movement. <laughs> One attack I have already mentioned, that you are against Christianity and also against the person of Jesus Christ. <laughs> you answer to any, that... Any T-Y ending is very close to me with infinity. <laughs> <laughs> so, my message is that of infinity and Christianity and infinity both m meet towards the end. So there is a meeting point in the goal, in the end of Christianity and infinity. And therefore, if there are two parts, they meet in the end, and all is well that ends well. <laughs> hmm? All is well that ends well. So there is no opposition to, to Christianity. Eh? I love Christ very much, no? because find the kingdom that lies within you, I think has been the main teaching of Christ. And therefore, the transcendental meditation, which takes the awareness to that level which Christ wanted every Christian to have, is only a friend of Christianity. TM is a friend of Christianity because it takes the awareness of the people to the field which Christ wanted everyone to enjoy. Knowledge of TM and its practice is a universal principle and universal practice. Hmm? No matter to what religion one belongs, hmm? every man has to be a fully developed man fully developed man. And if a man is not fully developed, if his individuality has not come on the level of infinity, the universality, then that man will, cannot be a successful man or a good religious man. He will not be a fulfilled man. And therefore, our movement desires the people of all religions to meditate and become f a graceful members of their religion. No. Undeveloped man will always be a drag to any society, to any religion. A fully developed man of pure consciousness will live religious life spontaneously, without effort. So. I think Christianity also, as any other religion does, want all the people to enjoy the grace of God, enjoy the kingdom of heaven within, and with transcendental meditation, pure consciousness grows very quickly. Pure consciousness, eh? conscientia pura. In, it grows very automatically <laughs> and only in pure consciousness can a man live real, good, successful, religious life. If pure consciousness is not developed, one cannot contrive religion in one's life. Religion cannot be forced in one's life. It can only be lived automatically, spontaneously. Uh, I just go on with this text. Uh, you answered the other day already, I love Christianity very much, 
Nothing would make me happier than Christ being amongst us right now. May I now ask you to specify your statement. Jesus Christ was a great master, a guru, also after his so-called official message of the Gospels. He healed the mentally and bodily sick, sick people. He walked over the water. He required that the creative intelligence of the children's, theirs is the kingdom of heaven, be appreciated and maintained most carefully. In that respect, I see a certain obvious relationship between the teaching and the person Jesus Christ and TM. It even appears to me also that the simple and easy way um, you offer has obvious and astounding similarity with the little way of the so-called little way of the greatest and most popular modern Christian mystic, Therese von Lisieux. The difficulty arises, however, uh, with the suffering uh, Christ who took the cross upon him. This aspect of the person of Christ has strongly been placed into the foreground by the Church since the Gothic time. Do you believe and wish that the other Christ, the great helpful master, the guru, should again be replaced into the foreground? And do you see in that a contribution for the solution of the problems of our time? <laughs> the message of these masters is the message of truth, reality, And reality is something which doesn't change with the waves of time, continue the same thing. Hmm? So the message of any religion is an immortal message to guide all mankind. It's the same message. Hmm? Every religion teaches basically the same thing, purification of life and communication with the higher uh, state of evolution. And therefore, Any, any great master of any religion uh, never dies, he is ever alive, inspires the life of all the people everywhere. So it's the eternal message. Kingdom of heaven within you is a truth which will always have the same meaning. The meaning will not change. within you, the kingdom of heaven, and therefore something that is within you can easily be gained by you. This is the truth of transcendental meditation, which is just an automatic procedure to get to the kingdom of heaven within. So the same eternal message broadcast from time to time by different teachers in different lands becomes a cognizable reality, hmm? an experiential reality through transcendental meditation. And therefore, seen from the religious light, transcendental meditation is a practical way for every religion to achieve the goal of any religion and every religion. Now, what the life of these teachers has been, whether they carried the cross or they rode on camel backs or they drove on horsebacks or they walked on the streets or remained in the forest or dwelt in the caves or what they did and where they lived and how they did their activity. All this is a joy to the followers, but the followers are the followers of the essential message that they gave, the guidance that they gave to the people which elevated them. For that they were honored. Other aspects of their life, their activity, their interest in this or this, This is, even though a joy to all the followers, but the following is not built on these activities of the masters. 
The following is built on the practical utility of their message, the practical value of their teaching, which is to guide man to higher states of life. It is this which brought the people to follow their advice. So the formula is to do what the teacher says, not necessarily do what he does. Mm, if Christ walked on fire or on water, he only did it so that people could follow his advice, not that they should also walk on water and drown. <laughs> So it's not necessary to try to do what the teacher does. His, his actions, his, his manner of living or eating or drinking, it doesn't have to be adopted. All these things go with the climate, but the... <laughs> habits of the masters go with the climate what he wears and what he does here and there, what he eats and all. But all the people can't eat the same thing or do the same way, no. What is important is the message, the teaching. The teaching is most important and it is that which is beneficial to follow. So the value of Christ is in giving that message, kingdom of heaven is within you. And then first you seek the kingdom of God and all else will be added unto thee. So the every devout Christian has to be a man of God. He has to have that insight into life and should enjoy that heaven that bliss consciousness, pure consciousness, which is deep within his mind, deep within his heart, deep within himself. Hmm? That is the main thing. And this is what transcendental meditators experience in their life. As they start to dive deep within, they begin to feel better and the stresses are less and life becomes easier and help thy neighbor becomes a an instinct and an inspiration to everyone one doesn't have to 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 know from the from the teaching that help thy neighbor is a good thing it becomes a habit so and in this way one begins to live the religion living the religion is by Developing pure consciousness. Hmm? Religious life is life which is spontaneously lived. It's not a matter of thinking and doing good, but one is structured in doing good. Christianity is a good religion. Christ has been a great master. All this is good, but what is not good is suffering. No Christian should suffer because Christ has said, kingdom of heaven is within you. Every Christian should enjoy their bliss consciousness, that freedom which is the essential message of Christ. And <coughs> It's not necessary to suffer, it's very, very important. No follower of Christ should suffer. There should not be any sect of Christianity which propagates suffering. It's not good to propagate suffering in the name of Christ. Transcendental meditation eliminates the root cause of suffering. It eliminates the root cause of suffering, which is ignorance. 
ignorance of one's own absolute nature, ignorance of one's own unbounded abilities, this ignorance should be rooted out. And this is rooted out when one takes one's awareness to that transcendental level through this practice of transcendental meditation. Hmm? 